Today we're going to be reviewing the album 12th Period Toothache by Post Malone. You know, he hasn't dropped an album in three years and we've all missed him. You know what I mean? The only song I've heard so far is Cooped Up by Roddy Rich, And I think the song with Kid Leroy. But let's get into it. You know what I mean? I hope it's some fight. Okay. I know if I don't be evil, but I won't do it again. Okay. I was born a shame. This is a real nice intro right here, man. I ain't gonna lie. You cutting up on this bitch. A little bit more depressing for a uh, Post Malone style, but Post Malone always does come with a few songs that are made for when you're feeling like fucking shit. You know what I mean? All right, so the first track was obviously pretty amazing. I like that a lot, you know? That was a real nice intro. But the next one up is the song of Roddy Rich. A lot of people are saying that they dislike Roddy Rich's uh, verse on this song, but I don't know. I feel like uh, besides the first four lines, everything else is pretty okay. Hey, man, the way this video set up is fucking amazing, you know? I like the paparazzi as uh, aesthetic he was going for. See, these four lines right here, you know? I feel like this song could have went without these four lines just because I didn't really like them, you know what I mean? The transition was kind of ass, but let's go. A project nigga, I never thought I would see shit. If I tried to tell you, you probably wouldn't believe us. Yeah, you can tell that this is a song that Post Malone was uh, trying to like make mainstream, you know, the radio song. Because the rest of this album, I heard that he put his heart into. A lot of people talking shit about Roddy's verse, but I feel like it was pretty solid. You know what I mean? It was kind of short, so, but yeah. Other than that, you know, let's get started. Alright, so the next track up is Lemon Tree. Uh, this is the third track on the album. Could you be... I don't know. The way he said better, you can definitely tell he says the hard R quite often. Yeah, I'm just playing. This is what you call a real country rap right here. Yeah, sorry. I forgot to fucking press the video on that one. But uh, yeah, that was Lemon Tree. That, that song was pretty nice, you know. It was more of the country song. I feel like he put a lot of himself into this song. It sounded really decent. I like the second half of the song. A lot better than the first when the drums kick in. But uh, let's listen to the fourth track. The next track is called Wrapped Around Your Finger. Alright, when I first turned it on, you know, I didn't know if I liked it. But once I got to the hook, it got stuck in my head, you know. This is another song I see getting a decent amount of radio play. I wouldn't call it generic because it sounds a little bit different than uh, usual Post Malone. But I still really like it. It's definitely uh, one of the more radio-friendly songs on the album. But let's listen to number five. I think this is the song with Doja Cat. We went out of France and we woke up in Japan. I like you. I do. Because I've been trying to hit it all week, babe. Why you working on sweet? Man, usually I really don't like Doja Cat, but actually I ain't gonna lie. On this song, she's talking pretty nice, you know what I mean? I like the way her and Post Malone sound on the same track, you know? The transition between these two sounded a lot better than between him and uh, Roddy Rich. Post Malone always gets me with his hooks, man, you know? The hook on this one was also really nice. I ain't gonna lie, this album sounded like it's pretty good so far, man, you know? Might be top five albums of the year. Shit, let's get into the next one. The next one's called I Cannot Be a Sadder Song. I really like how Post Malone is trying his hardest to sound different on every song, you know? Like, uh, none of these songs have, even though they all sound similar, none of them sound the same, you know? Or at least his flow doesn't. It really surprises me. I'm liking it a lot. on this free my slats when they go free my dogs man damn yeah i ain't gonna lie that was another banger man shit this album is uh this album sounded pretty good so far man you know i ain't had no songs i would skip yet that could be because i'm biased i just listen to a lot of shit maybe just because i miss gunna man you know and i know nothing new ain't coming out for a while let's listen to the next all right the next one is insane take your bitch give her back Way came on this bitch talking spicy already, okay. Hey, you don't believe me. Short scare, please. Verse, second verse, yeah, second verse, second verse, again. 
Man, you know I ain't gonna lie. I know I've said this about every song so far, but I actually like that one too. You know, this was more of a rap in Post Malone, you know what I mean? It was kind of nice, you know? I could actually hear this one being played like inside the club, you know, or like in the car on the way there. I'd listen to this one at a party. It was pretty nice. I'm realizing he only has a few features on this album too. You realize that a lot of artists fucking like, you know, rely heavily on features just to make their album sell when I've only heard uh, Gunna and Doja Cat so far, you know, but... Let's get into number seven. This one's called Love Hate Letter to Alcohol with the Fleet Foxes. God damn, soon as the song started, it sounded like Ange was just fucking singing to me. You know, this is crazy. This gives me Kanye Don the vibes. That song was uh, pretty nice, you know? Honestly, the best thing about it was the fucking instrumental. It sounded like Angel singing, but the song was more so based about a story. I like the story, but I like the instrumental better. All right, next up, we got the song with uh, Kid Leroy. This is a song I heard already. It was actually really fucking nice. So I might be a little excited when it's playing. Rain, this is like the first time my body changed. Do this back where I'm laying on my head. Devil on my back, so I sleep on my chest. And another angel go to waste. I ain't gonna lie, the kid, the kid Leroy just held his own against his vocals uh, with Post Malone, and them harmonizing together just sounded fucking immaculate, you know? Uh, shit, this might be one of the best songs on the fucking album. I could be a little biased, because this is the song I heard before I heard the album, but this boy is nice. I'm gonna play this tonight while I have sex with your mom. You're gonna hear it. God. Damn. I wish I could fucking sing, dude. I ain't gonna lie, you know? My pussy ratio would be so fucking high. Yeah, now this is fucking crazy. This is spectacular, to say the least, you know what I mean? Somebody asked Post Malone for me how much a vocal lesson costs, you know? I'm gonna start singing the bitches just like that. Like Vagina, on spot. So I've just realized that I'm stupid again and forgot to put the video right there. But, you know, it's okay, you know? There's more videos to come. But yeah, no, that was probably my favorite song so far on the album. The way they harmonized together sounded. Let's get into number 10, Euthanasia. Yeah, did you check on Post Malone? I just heard Euthanasia, and I'm pretty sure this nigga may have died. No, I like the song a lot. It was a little bit more depressing than, uh, you know, some other songs in the album, but you know, sometimes you gotta let it all out. Let's get into number 11, When I'm Alone. This song sounds like there was an entire fucking band behind this man smashing the fuck out of the drums the entire time while he was singing. This definitely sounds like it should be performed at a fucking concert, you know, with the band behind him. When we go to bed, she be creeping on my side. Okay. I was drinking all day, I left. Ain't that bad, I got room service. Living in the hotel, living in the... That one was called When I'm Alone, you know. Uh, probably one of my least favorite on the album. Not because it's bad or anything, but just because it doesn't sound as good as the rest of them. You know, this one sounds a little bit more just like a regular generic Post Malone song, you know. But nonetheless, it was still pretty good. All right, now the next one up is called Waiting for a Miracle. And everything done for the dead to the is for the living. Post Malone keeps getting me, you know. I, I didn't like the whole first minute of this song, but then... Once he came in on this second part, you know, I'm starting to like it just a little bit more. That one was called Waiting on a Miracle, you know. I didn't like the first minute of it, but he caught me with the second verse, you know. It uh, probably wasn't my favorite on the album, but it still sounded pretty good. The 13th song is the song with him in The weekend, which has been out for almost a year. So I'm not going to play that one because obviously you've probably heard it before. So we're going to go straight to number 14. Surprisingly, we're actually to the end of this video. You know, I don't know how long it's going to be when I finish it, but I've been recording this for over an hour and a half so far. <sighs> Another thing I'll say, too, is I like that he made it 14 songs, you know, so you don't feel like you have to listen to a fucking entire, like, you know, three hours worth of music. Honestly, I feel like 14 is the perfect amount of songs for an album, but that's just me. Let's get into the last one right now. Ain't gonna hurt all. all 
right, so I might be stupid. I think it's just a little outro. It's only like a little uh, fucking, you know, one minute song. Honestly, most of the album was pretty amazing. You know, I'm going to say that this one is maybe better than Hollywood's Bleeding. I don't know. You know, I'd have to go back and listen to it. I'll probably do a comparison between all four of his albums sometime but you know i'd give this album at least a maybe an eight or nine out of ten i liked it a lot i feel like a lot of the songs have replayability and you know you're probably going to hear a few of them on the radio for their fucking summer coming up i feel like it's probably one of the top five all around general albums of 2022 you know but then again the year is only halfway over with so you know let me know what you think in the comments which which was your favorite thanks for watching i appreciate you guys did you think this album was better than this last one and peace